What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Black Armor's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Star Wars Hot Toys Death Trooper from The Mandalorian, I believe. Pretty sure. And this is on loan to me from Chris Pinkerton. If you're nasty of Crashbox Customs fame, what do his dioramas look like? Well, that's the gag. Chances are you've bought one already. He was kind enough to let me look at this. That's two in a row. His pre-orders are filling in. Wish some of mine would. So I'm anxious to do so. I already feel better about it than I do the clone, and I thought the clone was decent. So let's get into it, but in order to do so, we got to start with accessories. It comes with the display base. It's the it's an older model, you know. It's uh, what did it say? It's an older code, sir, but it checks out, which is interesting in a different deco. But this is like old school Hot Toys Star Wars stuff. Like this is like what Han Solo New Hope was on and stuff. So that's interesting. And then your typical kind of two pronged uh, pelvis support. He comes with an array of hands. We have two fist hands, two trigger finger hands. Two like holding hands slash thumbs up hands. I'm guessing that came with the original because I don't see any weapons or accessories that necessarily would need this. I'll do a better look of uh, once over once we get to the figure. And um, one kind of like fingers outstretched hand that's in addition to the two supporting or relaxed hands that you saw in the opening footage. Now, if a hand should break while swapping it out, you do get two wrist peg replacements that are ball hinges and they swivel at both hand, at both ends so you'll be able to get up, down, and in, out. You get the more pistol-esque gun, which is beautifully sculpted and painted, I might add, with silver weathering throughout and a base of kind of a metallic black on top just outstanding stuff here and he'll hold that just fine you can also attach the gun to this strap here so we can holster it and the strap is magnetic so you don't have to worry about getting the little bit in to plug it in and all that they took care of that for you which is nice he also comes with the more kind of long rifle-esque. None of this moves that I can tell. And once again, I just don't feel comfortable messing with it. But this is probably one of the most detailed blasters I've seen them do. So you have this bit here that's you know meant to look like it's folding up. Then you have the extra bit under there. All of it's painted black with the uh, metallic weathering throughout. Then we have silver weathering added on top of that. Then we have this silvering with the... That like, uh, you know, like it's been burned from blaster fire up there. That's how there's a word for it. You guys always tell me what it is and I always forget. Um, then you have this bit, which does extend so that it can mount into his shoulder. And you have the red accents throughout. This bit is added on and it has wires that run from it to the blaster itself. You have the magazine here in the side. Like it's, or I guess it's a battery probably technically, who knows. But dude, then you have the straps and they run through like proper straps. Like it's incredible, this thing. One of their best offerings. And he'll hold it just fine. And obviously you can drape this over his shoulder with no issue as well. I'll try to show a picture of that at some point. Gimmicks wise underneath, and it does come with the batteries for it. If you lift up the helmet and click this on and then put the helmet back on, which is magnetic as well. You'll see that the bottom bits of his mouth and the little kind of visor thing on the side of his helmet do light up, which is cool enough. Accuracy wise, it's really hard to get a good picture of these guys kind of straight on, but I would say it's pretty accurate. It's hard to tell exactly, but they did add that little side visor thing on, which some of them do have. The color tones are right. The glossiness is right. The little details in the side of the visor, like in the cheek section is right. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say they probably nailed it. It looks from every angle as if they did nail it. And the same kind of goes for the body. It's hard to tell. It's all black. Without looking at like behind the scenes photos, it looks like they got it close enough. The main thing I'm doing is like looking for little details. Like I see the box on his knee. I look for the box on the knee on the trooper from the screen photo and it's there. I look for little stuff like the stuff on the forearms. I see it on another forearm of a trooper. Like the silver belt buckle, etc. Like it all seems like they really nailed every little detail. And that's the, the best I can do. There's nothing that looks glaringly wrong. So we'll move into the plastic work, which is pretty much all of the armor, which is significant. It all sits on top of the other stuff, which we'll talk about when we get to soft goods. But um, it's nice. It's good material. It's sculpted well. It all has this brown line work in it, which I'm guessing is accurate. I, I Like I said, it's really hard to tell, including um, the wash here. Like, I, I think, you know, this one's tricky. It, this one's tricky to really, really analyze because it's all black armor and they're not in a ton of scenes so it's like hard to find images of them 
but everything that I can tell to include like these silver things here that have the wash on them and stuff seems accurate. I'm guessing that this brown work here is to try to give the uh, look any way that it is dirty or weathered or worn or from you know that sort of lifestyle and I think it does it well enough. Now the helmet details in particular um, you know we got the the grit all in the kind of filtering system of it and I think all of that works nicely along with the green translucent plastics and stuff it's like I don't know it seems dead to rights to me. The soft goods is the undertone. Now, I will tell you, I'm just going to give two little example or one little example here because it's hard once again to see, but there's like the sweater sock look like the clone trooper is underneath and then the rubbery bits are kind of sewn on top. And what this does is allow the armor to kind of stay put a bit more. And I enjoy that and have found it less frustrating than when we just looked at the clone trooper recently that did not have it. So that's my two cents on that. So let's start with articulation and we'll talk about it a bit. The head is on a ball peg to the neck and the neck is on a ball peg to the chest. So it's kind of acting like a double ball peg, only not as efficiently. So the head gets you up fairly limited. However, the down works much better. You also get the swivel and confused trooper look. Now, the, oh, pardon me. The shoulders here are on disc hinges. It feels like they go into a ball peg in the chest, but they are limited. So be advised that I don't know if you can get this much beyond that. It feels like you could, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest it. Also, it will, oof, it will rotate up, but once again, it, and that one's working a little bit better. You're going to have to finagle it around all of these layers. Just be advised. Now, there's a bicep swivel. That works no problem. There's a double jointed elbow. That works no problem. The wrist swivel and hinge on the disc on the uh, ball hinge that we've already kind of talked about. All right. We have a... It... <sighs> It feels like a single ball peg from the chest into the abdomen and then another one from the abdomen into the pelvis. Using both, you're not gonna get much over or back and you get a little bit of a swivel. So we're talking pretty limited stuff here um, with the exception of the arm movements. All right, the feel like universals for hips, that gets you out to about there and forward and back to about there. And I'm really cautious to push this thing to its limits. Um, you also have a thigh swivel and a double jointed knee, but, but it only gets you a little bit past 90 degrees, but you shouldn't need all that knee range because the, uh, the hips don't really allow for you to use it anyway. And then the ankles they feel like double ball pegs to me. Uh, I can't really tell. But you can get a pretty significant ankle tilt up and down and a rocker. Unfortunately, I don't know if you'll be able to get them in a pose to utilize it, but maybe we'll see here in the final thoughts if you can. But yeah, I mean, um, not perfect, uh, but good looking. So I, it probably came down to one of those things of sacrifice, you know, and it, it's, it's a matter of what do you want to sacrifice, sculpt or articulation. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. And it is that because of the layers, right? The sweat sock and then the rubber stuff on top and then the armor on top. If you have experience with Hot Toys, then you'll know. Sometimes you can get lost as to where the joint is and the orientation of that joint at any given time. All of those layers on this only adds to that. It compounds that. So it can get tricky to kind of find out where the moving pieces are. Also, I feel like it wouldn't have killed them to thrown in some grenades and stuff i know they didn't use them in that episode of the mandalorian and that's kind of how hot toys rolls but you know you already had the molds k2so has them like i think the previous death trooper came with them i just throw us a bone sometimes you know what i mean it's kind of what i'm getting at and a wider range of motion specifically in the arms but also in the hips to be fair would have helped kind of get this guy in a few more dynamic poses which can be tricky to pull off here
Positives wise, however, it kind of does what Hot Toys does. It nails the sculpt, it nails the materials, it nails the accessories, it has the light up gimmick. Like it's the Hot Toys bundle, right? You get this guy posed, especially like in a relaxed pose or standing guard pose, and you put him where he's supposed to be in your collection, and he's gonna look like a million bucks in one dollar bills. No question about it. But the function and utility of the figure does come into question, and I think it comes into question because of the layers of stuff. However, with a little bit of patience, perhaps far more than I have and perhaps some balls or braveness which I may not when I'm dealing with someone else's 200 and some dollar figure you probably can get him worked up to look quite nice so it is a recommend for me it is a beautiful figure especially if you're into troopers and that kind of stuff I think that you will be pleasantly surprised thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time kids.